The promise of the European community has involved not only the prospect of a unified economy, but of a unified defense policy as well. The conflict in Bosnia, though, has changed the assumptions about the strength and power of allies in a new European order. CNN's Rob Reynolds looks at the problems of this uncertain union. It's the war on the European community's doorstep. First in Croatia, now in Bosnia. Tens of thousands have died. Towns have been leveled. Populations uprooted. Refugees have deluged neighboring states. And while the Balkans burned, Europe talked. The European community has appointed two distinguished mediators, convened a pair of international peace conferences, dispatched monitors and observers, and held innumerable meetings, all in an effort to halt the war through diplomacy. But none of it has ended the fighting or the dying. It's a strange situation in history that community of 12 countries, which leaving aside the United States, are the richest and most powerful countries in the world, with enormous armed forces of their own taken together, have completely capitulated before the idea of spheres of influence or responsibility for their neighbors. So former Yugoslavia's self-destruction has claimed another victim, the European community's grand vision of a common policy on defense and security. The biggest consequence of Yugoslavia was the shattering of the myth of European unity. The reality is that the Europeans did not have the common interests necessary to achieve a foreign policy interest in Yugoslavia. A year and a half ago, the situation was very different. At the Maastricht summit, EC leaders agreed to work together to develop common policies. Prospects for a united Europe were at their brightest. Maastricht says that in the framework of common foreign and security policy, we would also like to see develop a common defense policy, which might eventually end in a common defense. Soldiers drawn from many countries of the alliance. NATO, the transatlantic defense partnership, which for over 40 years had been the guarantor of European security, would, according to some European visionaries, become less and less important. Its functions taken over by a homegrown defense organization called the Western European Union. But beyond the community's frontiers, the crisis in former Yugoslavia was demanding Europe's attention. In April 1992, Bosnia declared its independence. Although many observers questioned whether the new state could survive, Germany pressed its EC partners to quickly recognize the Muslim-dominated government, a move seen in retrospect as enraging the Serbs and accelerating the pace towards civil war. As the war intensified, Europe's old nightmares came back to haunt it. Women and children dodging death. Cities shattered and in flames, concentration camps, and ethnic cleansing, a new name for an old European curse. EC diplomats were stymied by the complexity and savagery of Bosnia's ethnic hatreds. I think it's fair to say that uh, nobody has foreseen when uh, the conflict started and when the process of uh, dissolution started how deep it would run, how strong the sentiments are, were, uh, what kind of nationalisms, in fact, we were uh, dealing with. Several EC nations committed troops to protect United Nations humanitarian aid convoys. But when European governments looked to the White House for leadership, concerns for the safety of these lightly armed troops led them to block President Clinton's call for more forceful action. Uh, shelter, shelter, shelter! 
And that, in turn, has led to bitterness and recriminations from U.S. lawmakers. I can't even begin to express my anger for a European policy that's now asking us to participate in what amounts to the codification of a Serbian victory. Let's not mince words. European policy is based on cultural and religious indifference, if not bigotry. The split over Balkan policy threatens to weaken the long-standing security links between Europe and America. There is clearly at almost every level of the American administration a disdain for the great European plans of the United States of Europe or the common foreign and defense policy. I think we could face the double danger of both decoupling Europe from America, but also still having a Europe that isn't capable or willing to shoulder the burden of dealing with its own problems in its own backyard. The Bosnian Civil War has proved to be far more than a drama of obscure ethnic hatreds in a far corner of Europe. It has raised questions about the EC's will to sustain its vision of the community's future and has taught Europe a painful lesson about its limitations. Rob Reynolds, CNN, Brussels.